Welcome, subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for following, sharing, and liking our videos. And welcome, new subscribers. I'm always doing book reviews. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, you can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. I am here again with another book review. Remember, I told you I would be coming here. This is an awesome book review. So I may be here a little longer because this book was very juicy. And this book is called Dispelling the Way to Go. The Way to Go. All right. Uh, Breaking the Curse of Evil. The world would be a better place if everyone read this book by Paul Levy. Okay, this is the book right here. All right, very, very good book. Uh, very interesting because I talked about spiritual warfare. I made a video on that. And a lot of things that I hit on uh, in my video, I talked about because spirit was revealing these things to me. Uh, I've been on this journey for a little while and it's just amazing uh, what the ancestors, what my spirit guides revealed to me uh, when it comes to uh, spirituality. And I've talked about spiritual warfare uh, in one of my videos. Go back and watch that video. This is so, so awesome. I'm going to hit in some topics in this book that I talked about in the video. And then I'm going to discuss uh, about what's going on today that relates to this book. So let me just dive in here. Like I said, this is a good book. If you want to know about spiritual warfare, you want to know what's really going on in the world, you want to know really um, what is ruling the minds of people because breaking down the psychology of society and breaking down your own psychology is so is soul work. And this is what this is all about. Psychology means the study of the soul. So once you start studying your psychology and studying, you know, really paying attention to other people's psychology, you're looking at the soul. And when you start breaking down your psychology, that is soul work. When you realize uh, why you think the things you, you think, why you uh, feel the way you feel, you are breaking down uh, those barriers to really get to know yourself and start doing some soul work. Like I told you, I can't promote the Know Thyself course. Uh, you know, I, I can't promote that course enough because it does so much. You're ba it basically takes you on a shamanic initiation. That's basically what the Know Thyself course is. It's a shamanic initiation of breaking down uh, your soul getting to know yourself better because we really don't know ourselves really good until we start breaking down our psychology and, and, and start looking at our habits and our behavior. And, and uh, we, it tells a lot once we start looking at it. So let me get into this book. Like I said, it's very, very juicy. And I'm going to be hitting on some hot topics here. Uh, I have some pages marked and I have a lot of pages marked in here. This, this book is, uh, it has, let me see. It has 15, yeah, 15 chapters and 267 pages. The book was so good. I thought it was going to take me longer to finish it, but it didn't. It only took me maybe a week and a half to finish this book because it's just that good. If you want to learn about spiritual warfare, you want to learn uh, the psychology about society, what is ruling society now, oh my gosh, this is an awesome book. You have to have it. You have to have it. I mean, it, it revealed a lot of things that the ancestors were, were already sharing with me. That already shared with me. And again, they did it again. They shared some things with me. And then I found a book, ran up on it, that was discussing the very things I made in that video, Spiritual Warfare. Please go back and watch the video. Okay, so let me uh, dive in there. Uh, this, the, this, we're going into the introduction. It's called Close Encounters of the Way to Co Kind. Uh, this guy was very enlightened, very enlightened. This guy was brilliant. This book was intelligently, articulately, brilliantly written. Okay? Because, I mean, he, he, he explains it all so carefully and very precise, you know, with the way uh, he wrote this. And, and to write this, he had to break down his own psychology. And coming in contact with the wedding code. Because we're all in contact with it. We're all because we have been uh we have been programmed 
And a way to go, that bug, that parasite, I'm calling, I call it a parasite. He, what the indigenous people, our ancestors call it, was the way to go. So that parasite is in the programs. And it's so subtle, you don't recognize it's there. Like in the, in the movie Matrix, when those people was turned into Mr. Smith, that's sort of like the way to go as well. They turn into these Mr. Smiths or whatever. They turn into the program. So uh, let me just read this first, uh, this introduction. Uh, it says, I've been dreaming about this book since my first book, The Madness of George W. Bush, A Reflection of Our Collective Psychosis, came out in 2006. I need to get that book too. I've been wanting to elaborate deep in my inquiry and, and articulation of psychological disease that I wrote about in the book, but without having to reference or think about George W. Bush, what a relief. There is a psycho-spiritual disease of the soul that originates within ourselves and that has the potential either to destroy our species or to wake us up, depending on whether or not we recognize what is, reveal what it is revealing to us. In dispelling the way to go, breaking the curse of evil, I pay homage to the way of the Native American tradition have long been tracking the very same psychic virus that I have that I point to. Indigenous people's articulation of the disease inspires all of us to track and bring into focus this elusive non-local parasite of the mind. And it's the parasite of the mind. I, the, I, I catch myself every time, uh, especially when my emotions are triggered. And I'm like, okay, uh, you know this is wrong, Penny. So why are you one to react to that you know uh so like i said monitor your mind and your emotions very carefully and and start asking yourself questions because that's what we do in a know thyself course to figure out because once you start working out working out why you're doing it and you can relate it to trauma you know that parasite can't control you like that anymore and like i said all of us have been affected by it through programming through religions through government through our economy, you know, the social system, we've all been affected by it. And uh, it's, it, it's with us with, for a very good reason. By combining the native tradition, expression of this disease of the soul with my own articulation of this malady, based on personal experience, both our vision come into sharper clarity and focus. I look forward to many others adding their insight to the mix. So as to deepen our understanding and flesh out our flesh out our course of action in response to this psychic plague even more clearly. Writing this book has helped me stay sane in the world gone mad. To quote the Maverick psych psychiatrist R. D. Lane, the condition of alienation, of being asleep, of being unconscious, of being out of one's mind, in the in the is the condition of the normal man. Normal men have killed perhaps a hundred million of their fellow normal men in the last 50 years. Our species is clearly in the middle of a mass psychic epidemic, which I call malignant egophrenia, a Native American called Wadico. So that's what he calls it. Uh, I wanted to read something else too, guys. I thought that was very interesting. Uh, the foreword, let me go back to the foreword when he very, when he started to begin to write this book. And it's interesting, the backlash that he got before I'm telling you, there is a war on consciousness. They don't want us to be awake because if we find out what's really controlling, controlling, um, the elite, because they're, they're using this spirit to turn everything backwards and upside down and to keep us infected uh, with this parasite. It is running rapid here. And so he says, in 1997, a, str a strategic planning group of the CIA made a visit to my company in Washington, D.C. They brought with them a woman whose job and title were classified. I was not allowed to know them. Upon listening to my presentation on how to strengthen the American economy by transforming our investment model, she looked at me and said, you know what your problem is? You don't understand where evil comes from. She told him that when she got when he talked about a, a more healthy economy. 
She told him that. My search to understand evil, its transformation, is what attracted me to Paul Levy's invaluable work. The question of where evil comes from and how it transmits through our society like a contagious virus is profoundly important. It, it is contagious. That's why you see narcissism is a part of that Wetico is is a part of that Wetico spirit. You see that narcissism uh, growing more and more, and the empaths are being affected, infected. Let me say, let me stop saying affected, infected with the virus by coming in contact with narcissists because we react to their their cruelty, and so we, it puts us in victim mode. And it destroys a part of a uh, part of our spiritual strength, uh, trying to fight their lies and and their uh, antagonizing behaviors. You know, so it, it infects even the empaths, the narcissistic narcissists are inf infecting the empaths with the cruel behavior because we're constantly trying to defend ourselves and uh, trying to beat. The narcissist, and that's where we go wrong at trying to fight fire with fire. Okay, this book goes deep. I'm telling you, this this is an awesome book. I was, I, I mean, I read this book within a week and a half. I mean, it was, I was absorbing the book. Our economic problem are symptoms of our governance, which is in turn a symptom of a problem we have with evil. If we want to address our economic problems, we have to deal with our root problem. The ascendancy of evil and its institutionalized use of invisible weaponry and forces, including financial systems. Paul Levy's book, Dispelling the Way to Go, Breaking the Curse of Evil, is an exploration of inhumanity, how we participate in it. Paul calls the collective psychosis under which we labor, Wedico, a Cree term that refers to the diabolically wicked person or spirit who terrorizes others. Again, we're talking about these these fascist faces, fascism, and we're talking about these narcissists that's run the elite that's running the world right now. He leads us through the manifestation of the Wetico in our culture, our media, our media, our economy, and most important, ourselves. Solving problems requires that we take responsibility for it. This is my problem. I will study it, I will master it. I will take responsibility for it, and I will act to do that which I can do. Taking responsibility is not something that is encouraged. We are encouraged to be victims. We are encouraged to blame them. In doing so, we give away our power. You see all that protesting and all that stuff going on right now? You know, uh, that can be a good thing, but then that can turn out to be, you know, not so good. We reject the opportunity to take responsibility to identify our complicity in the process. We have we are complacent in it. We are participating in it. Okay. Uh in the process. And by changing how we feel and act to reinvent our world individually and collectively. All right. So, you know, that lady told him, like, look, you don't know who run this world, you know. Um uh, you don't know who run this world. You know, it's evil run this world. And, you know, you hear that too in your Bible as well if you guys are Bible readers. Uh, let me go on to the next paragraph. Take, uh, in the summer of 2000, I asked a group of 100 people at the conference of spiritually committed people who would push a button if it would immediately stop all hard narcotics trafficking in their neighborhood, city, state, country, thus offending the people who controlled an estimated $500 billion to $1 trillion a year in global money, laundering and accumulated capital therein. Out of 100 people, 99 said they would not push such a red button. When surveyed, they said they did not want their mutual funds to go down. If the U.S. financial system suddenly stopped attracting such capital, they did not want their government checks jeopardized their taxes raised because of the resulting problems financing federal government deficit. They preferred instead for adults to actively attempt to addict, addict their neighbors, children, and engage them in illegal activities in a criminal genocidal process. Our financial profiteering and complicity are not limited to aristocrats and their elites. 
who do their bidding. Our financial dependency on the participation is un un unsustainable. Economics in the form of suppressed knowledge and technology, covert force, organized crime, and global warfare are broad, ingrained, and deep. It goes deep. Whatever occurring in our world under highly centralized decision making, it takes millions of people to implement it. This means we are all involved. And that's what I say about this money system. And he talks about that too. You got this one, you got all these people to agree, and they had to do this through killing people and everything to agree that money has value. We had to agree to participate in this false illusion of that paper money having value. Think about that for just one minute. We had to participate in that, that paper money having value, even though there is no gold reserve to back up those notes. But yet we're still participating in this. We've all agreed to participate in something that's, a, that's basically an, an illusion. I don't know if you ever thought about it that, that way before, but that, that's what that is, okay? And it, this is a very touchy subject, uh, so just bear with me. In helping us understand and face the lies, lies that were that weave through our lives, Paul Levis' words lead, lead us to our extraordinary opportunity. We hold within our spirits, our thoughts, and our actions the power to transform our individual participation and by so doing our collective situation. It is a rare philosopher and a spiritual leader who can help us look into the mirror of our collective participation and denial. Yet Paul Levy accomplished this and more. He helps us a way, find a way to explore the most intimate connections between our spiritual and material lives, and the wider psychic storm and power lines in which we struggle. He makes a way through our madness, our spiritual starvation, to invoke our imagination to lit literally change our minds. As I, as we read the dispelling way to go, I often hear in my mind a favorite passage from the New Testament. For we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against the principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual weakness and wickedness in high places, Ephesians 6 and 12. And I've read that a lot of times, and I'm like, who is wicked in high places? God is it? Don't say it's our, you know, don't say it's our government or, you know, don't say it's our president, but this is exactly what it is, okay? Do not fool yourselves. As you read the spelling Wedico, you will be challenged. You will savor moments of aha when you finish. You will find something has shifted. There will be fewer spiritual calluses between your imagination and your daily life. You will see a way forward that you had not seen before. You will feel less isolated, more hopeful. You will never quite look at the world in exactly the same way again. And I, I have it since the ancestors have, sent, have shared that with me, doing my own healing. They shared that with me uh, and, and going to therapy, really shared with me what, what uh, psychologists were really about and what parasites uh, are all about. Okay, I'm on page three, the first chapter, creating the container. Like I said, this is going to be a long video. So if you want to stop in between and go get you something to drink or eat, go ahead and do that. All right. But, you know, this is this is something that we need to know. You need to know what type of of society you're living in spiritually, the sickness that's going on, you know, excuse me, around you. So you will know how to protect yourself and you know exactly what you are coming in contact with in this world. You know, please pay attention to how people are thinking and their psychology because it's going to tell you a lot about their frequency and the energy that, you know, they're dealing with. OK, creating the container, the greatest epidemic sick sickness known to humanity in the book Columbus and other cannibals. Indigenous author Jack D. Forbes loosely explores a psychological disease that has in that has been informing humans of self-destructive behavior that Native American people have known about for years. After reading this book, it was clear to me that he was describing the same psycho-spiritual disease 
of the soul that I wrote about in The Madness of George W. Bush. I introduced the idea that from the dawn of human history, our species has fallen prey to the collective psychosis, which I call malignant egophrenia. Speaking about this very same psychic epidemic, Forbes writes, for several thousands of years, humans, human beings have suffered from the plague, a disease worse than leprosy, a sickness worse than malaria, a malady that more terrible than smallpox. Indigenous people have been tracking the same psychic virus for many centuries, calling it the Wadiko, in Cree, Wendigo, and Abjawa, Wintiko, and Abjawa, Wintiko, and Powhatan. A term, yeah, the Powhatan. A term that refers to diabolically wicked, wicked person or spirit who terrorizes others by means of evil acts. That's the narcissist. That's narcissism. You see narcissism rise on a, on a big scale. And see, our ancestors didn't have a word uh, like narcissism. So they call it the way to call. Or in the Bible, they call it the Jezebel spirit. That's what they call it in the Bible, the Jezebel spirit. And it's growing on a mass scale. You're seeing that. And see, people wait for um, Satan or this devil to come back, but it's already here. This virus has already been injected into the psychosis of society. Okay? If you pay attention to it, you'll see it. Professor Forbes, who was one of the founders of Native Americans movement during the early 60s, 60, tragically, the history of the world for the past 2,000 years is great part the story of epidemiology of the Wadiko disease 2,000 years ago, okay? And who came on the scene 2,000 years ago, okay? So you keep that in mind. Is in the great part the story, okay? Wadiko malignant ignophrenia is a psychosis in the true sense of a word, a sickness of the soul and spirit. Though calling it by different names, like I said, they didn't call it different names. Forbes and I are both pointing to the same illness of the psych soul and spirit that has been at the root of humanity, inhumanity itself. There is no possibility of an awakening through our collective nightmare without the first, without first becoming aware of what is what it is that is keeping us asleep. As as if performing a magic ritual and exploring the entity of the way to call malign malignant egophrenia, we first have to invoke its spirit and enter into the relationship with it. And you have to. That's why that shadow work is so important. You know what I'm saying? You get a chance to really look at the way to call spirit when you start looking at your negative behaviors and actions and your thinking. You'd be like, oh, why, why am I thinking like that? You see how you've been affected by it. And you can start to clear it out. And that's when you begin to truly, truly awaken. Okay? Way to call malignant egophrenia needs to be con contemplated religiously, not in the dogmatic sense. I think you should have said spiritually here. But, you know, I, I would have used the word spiritually. But in the true meaning of the word that is carefully considering with a sense of all reverence, a living and dynamic agency that is conceived and experienced as a numinous power greater than our own ego. We must contemplate and engage in a way to go malignant egophrenia as objectively as we are able as if it is exists outside ourselves, lest we get too caught, get too mixed up with the object of our contemplation. And so, you, you, when you contemplate it, you just observe it. Observe these behaviors in yourself. Don't react to them. Okay, that, that you become the divine being when you you do that. You become the god when you actually can observe your thinking uh, and behaviors. You know, you can observe them and start dialoguing. And so that was in chapter one. Oh, uh, this is my, my favorite one, the war on consciousness. I think this is an awesome one. Uh, I, I, you know, there is a war. They don't want you. They don't want you away because they know once you figure this out, uh, that it's a war on consciousness and 
and they are injecting these programs. These programs have the virus in it because they they get they're the very opposite of nature. They're the very opposite of nature. Uh, they are the yin and yang. All right. And so our job is to wake up, take that darkness and bring light to it. Because the way to go, you can't defeat it. It was here first. Because there, before there was a light, there was darkness. And you can go back and read that too in your Bible. So, it, it, you know, get, get this book. Because it, re, it will really break down your understanding of the way to go spirit. And how you can use the way to go uh, psychosis to help you heal and, and awaken. You know, become an awakened being, a light being. Uh, this is chap. This is page fifty-three. I think this is chapter two or three. This is chapter three under a collective spell, and we're basically that's what we are. We're all under this same spell, and it's so so deep. Uh, until you start really doing the the soul work, you can get out of it. You know, you can get out. You can't destroy. It. But you can get yourself out of the psychosis being outside of your mind because that's what's going on uh, with a lot of things that you see around you. We are truly in a war. It is not the war we imagine. We are in which, which is the way of our true adversaries wanting. It is ultimately and actually not a foreign war against a foreign enemy. It is a war on consciousness, a war on our minds. The global war on terror, terror that is being fought around the world is embodied reflection in the material world of a deeper, more fundamental war that is going on in the realm of consciousness itself. People taken over by the way to call are the human instruments for the transpersonal spirit of evil to colonize and terrorize the world. In way to call disease, we unwittingly become drafted into being foot soldiers in the war, not on, but of and for terror. The way to call parasite feeds on and harvests the emotions and fear and terror. And that's what a narcissist does. A narcissist feeds off emotion, a reaction out of you. So when you see people going out here protesting and all that stuff and they be mad and all that, that's feeding the narcissist. They love that. They love pushing, pushing your buttons because remember, you're dealing with someone who's not in touch with their own emotional well-being. They're incapable of tapping into their emotions. So they have to get a feed off you. They are truly walking human vampires. Okay? So keep that in mind. The way to call parasite feeds on... Okay. Terror is the essence of its insidious, elucidary illogic. In Wadeco disease, the sight takes the terror that, he, that haunts it from within and in its attempts to master it, is unwittingly taken over by it, thus becoming an instrument of terror in the world. We have then become the very thing we most fear as we psychologically terrorize ourselves as well as terrorizing the world at large. The way to go is the bug which feeds the experience of terror within our mind and out in the world, fueling one of its, its more prominent manifestations in our world today, the global war on terror. See, that's, that's, it ain't no war on terror. you just saying that you want a reason, and this is what the, the, the war on terror really is, because we already know that they happened. We already know 9-11, what happened with 9-11. Okay, you just want a reason to go around bullying other countries, saying, and you are the terrorist. See, it's totally opposite. You are the terrorist. You are terrorizing other people. So how is there a war on terror? And you're the only war, you're the only army military that's terrorizing other nations. So tell me how that's working. It, it doesn't make sense. But it's always the total opposite. If you've been living in the United States or America long enough, and I'm going to stick to America because they probably do it in other countries too, but I, I just know my experience in America. America does totally, uh, United States does the, the total opposite. The government does the total opposite of what it says it does. It's very frightening. It's very frightening. Uh, people taken over by the way to go might be petty tyrants at home or a or at work, but still count among the impoverished and oppressed. 
wielding no real power in the world at large. What Forbes referred to as big waiticos, however, are full-blown waiticos who have climbed the waitico ladder. We're talking about these narcissists. We're talking about these secret societies and all this stuff, the elites. Jump through the Waitico loops and risen to the Waitico ranks so as to find themselves occupying positions of power where they can influence and control events in our world so as to rig and game the system to their own advantage and to det detriment of everyone else. The big Waiticos, and when he's talking about the big Waiticos, you're talking about the powers that rule this world. We're talking about the elite, okay? The big Waiticos who control the levers of power be they the super wealthy CEOs, corporation, bank presidents, or leaders of nation states are particularly dangerous because they frame and define the terms of our dialogue by choosing the metaphors which dominate, dominate the agreed upon historical nar narrative. So we already know that they lie about history too. They do that too. We already know that. Okay. Managing our perception through the propaganda engines of mainstream corporate media, which they control, big wetticos in positions of power craft the limits and perimeters of our conversation and debate. The wetico is an ideological virus whose means of replication propagation is through altering the syntax of our ideas. Wetticos deviates our mental syntax, the, the rules of how we form language, thereby distorting, distorting our semantics, semantics, the meaning we place on our experience of ourselves and the world. Wetico is a semantic disorder altering the core axioms and the interpretive schemas through which the site maps itself created meaning unto its inner and outer experience, shaping even meaning we place on meaning itself. The way the code bug makes it clear appear meaning, appear that the meaning objectively inheres in the outside world rather than realizing that we ourselves are generators of the meaning. The way the code virus influence how we spell our words and conjure up our experience. Okay, so he's letting you know uh, how influenced we are by the way to call spirit. For example, you have two words called prophet. You have a person that's a prophet, and then when you when you make when you buy when you sell something, you make a profit. You see how they do that? Now, who came up with the you know? See what those two words do, but yet they have two different meanings. You see what I'm saying? So that that was a good example there uh, for that. Uh, again, that was the War on Consciousness, Chapter 3. I'm going to go on. I got some more stuff. I mean, it's so much good stuff in here. And, my, you know, uh, I've already been going 30 minutes. I've already been going 30 minutes. The other chapter I'm going to read is the sixth chapter, page 105. And it's called Vampires, Parasites, and Aliens. Please go back and watch my spiritual warfare video if you haven't watched it. And what I'm saying might make sense to you. Okay? So if, if what I'm saying to you doesn't make sense to you now, go watch the spiritual warfare video. And then come back and watch this book review. And then you might have start having some aha moments to what I'm talking about. When people are infected by the Waitico virus, they are the host of the Waitico virus per parasite. And they are, I can just remember my experiences when, uh, before I started doing my healing, uh, and just in my younger years and doing my reflection and doing my shadow work, you know, healing myself, because all of us need to heal. Um... I saw what I was rightly out of my mind. I was insane. I was just like, oh my God, you was crazy. Something was definitely, you know, something was wrong with you. Something was wrong with you. You had a problem, you know, and I can see that energy. Uh, the dark part of myself had completely been taken over by this way to call uh, spirit, by this virus, this parasite. Okay. And, and, and when you start doing your own healing and, and looking at this, you'll start seeing where you're participating. You have been 
unconsciously because it, it can you it can only you can only participate in it if you're unconscious. Okay, it takes consciousness to deal with the way to call virus because we're all under this virus, but it takes consciousness to be able to stay clear of it, to be able to correct yourself and catch yourself doing things you have no business doing or saying. Okay, uh, when people are affected by the way to call virus, they are the host of the way to call parasite which is like a psychic tapeworm, a parasite of the mind. The microbe of the way to go can also be likened to an amoeba in that it is not hard edge, has no fixed form, and is continually shape-shifting. And I told y'all about that, how I was like, it was like, if you watched that movie Falling with Denzel Washington, or if you know anything about gang stalking, it's almost like you can see the spirit, the same spirit, <laughs> jump into different people, but it has the same response. The same thing with Matrix with, with, with Mr. Smith. It's the same thing. And it tripped me out when I first saw it. I was like, I knew I was experiencing something supernatural, but I didn't know a name for it. I did not have a name for it, but I knew that I was experiencing something supernatural. Okay? So when you, you probably have seen it, but it's called gang stalking too. When these people, they come after you and they don't have, they, they, they don't know why they're doing it. And you see that with empaths too, when empaths seem to draw narcissists to them, that's the parasite. That's the way to go. That's exactly what that is. That is, you know, and they tell empaths, hurry up and raise your vibration, hurry up and raise your vibration, or you're going to continue to keep attracting those narcissists. You're going to continue to start uh, attracting those narcissists. Okay? So be aware of that. It's one and the same thing. Don't let the names fool you because this thing operates on the same frequency. The microbe of the wetico can also... Okay, I've already read that. I'm sorry, you guys. Just the way certain computer viruses or malware infect a computer and program it to to self-destruct and mind viruses like the way to go program the human bio computer and that's i keep saying we are bio bio this is a bio body you hear what i'm saying this this is a biological suit okay your spirit is just enclosed in it and your mind is is a computer and it can be infected when you come in contact with the narcissist it infects your mind and it takes, especially if you've been uh, under narcissistic abuse for a long time, it takes a, and it takes a while to get it out. I know in some of the nar uh, narcissism abuse groups, they talk about uh, being worms in your head, and you you ruminate a lot. So it really does affect your mind when you have been affected by a narcissist or a parasite, way to call a uh, person, whatever you want to call it. Again, it's still working on the same frequency. To think, to believe, and behave in ways that result in self-destruction. People so afflicted, strangely enough, cling to the very thing that is torturing and destroying them. To quote a line attributed to the writer William S. Burroughs, every man has inside himself a parasite, being who is acting not at all to his advantage. The way to go is a, a kleptoparasite, a form of parasitism that thrives via theft. It steals your it steals your light. It steals your light. I'm a, I'm a witness to it now. I come from a family of narcissists. And look at me now. Now look at my gray hair. I look at my gray hair. Look at my gray hair. I'm 47 years old. And I am almost gray. And that, you know, all my hair is almost gray. That is living in that, that lower vibrational frequency, being born in a family like that, having to defend myself uh, against this, this spirit that was ruling my family, and then it infected me. Like I said, all of us have been affected by it, so no one escapes it. In some, or some way, you if, if, don't let it fool you because it'll try to make you think that it's 
that it that, that it you have not been infected. But when you start monitoring your thinking and your emotions, you realize that you have been affected by this programming, this wet All right? To the extent we are unconsciously possessed by the spirits of the wet It is as a it is if a psychic parasite has taken over our brain and tricked us. It's host into thinking we are feeding and empowering ourselves while we are actually nourishing the parasite. You ever want to get back on somebody and you feel good when you get back at them? Be like, I can't wait to get back at them. Especially when it's some revenge stuff and you get back at them and you feel good. That's not you really feeling good. That's, that's the way to go. Why are you feeling good because you was able to get back at somebody? Or why are you feeling good because you were able to hurt someone? You're feeding the way they call parasite in you. Okay, all you people that's being petted, all you people that's being petted, be, do some deep soul searching right now. Do some deep soul searching. And it damn near hurts not to get revenge or not to hurt somebody. It damn near eats you up not to do it. You know, catch yourself now. Catch yourself. Wetico is a virulent psychic pathogen that ins insinuates thought forms into our mind, which then unconsciously enacted, feed it, and thus it utterly kills its host. Because if you keep acting like that and keep behaving like that on that level, you're spiritually, you know, if you're spiritually dead, your body is going to follow. That's when the disease is going to set up in your body, whether it's cancer, you know, it, any other disease, it can be high blood pressure or anything else. It's going to manifest in your body. Body. It doesn't want to kill us too quickly. It wants to feed slowly. It wants to feed slowly. However, for for to successfully implement its agenda of reproducing and propagating itself throughout the field, it must let the host live long enough to spread the virus. Again, narcissism. It's got to go out and antagonize other people and mess them up, you know. If the host dies too soon, the bug will prematurely pre, be, be prematurely evicted and will suffer the inconvenience of having to find a new residence. Parasites far outnumber all other species on the planet. They are the key players in both the ecological and evolutionary process in our world. Parasitism is one of the most common forms of relationship in nature. So we should not be surprised to find human parasites. You heard it here. Now, get serious about your spiritual warfare. I'm telling you, people, this is real. This is real. This is why I say do the shadow work. Heal yourself. You, th you, you think you ain't been affected by, by some things, but your thinking has been messed up if you living on this planet and you're living in this society and you've been sitting down reading these history books and you've been sitting down looking at this news. You have been fed a lot of lies. And your emotions and your minds have been played with. And so it's very imperative that you sit down and you start working with yourself. You know, this book is awesome, man. You want to know about spiritual warfare? You want to know what's ruling this world? Get this book. Get this book. It's going to blow you away. It's going to blow you away. And I didn't think too much of it. When I first got it, I started reading what it was about. I was like, oh, man. And so it's like, get that book. That's what we've been telling you about. We've been telling you about this parasite. It's going to help you do some more healing once you can recognize what this thing really is, understand what it really is. And this is going to really help you understand what evil really is. Get the book. Okay. I have page, uh, why did I mark this right here? Okay. I have page 117 marked. I don't know what chapter this is, so let me look it up. Uh, we still in, in Vampires and Parasites and Aliens, chapter 6. So I'm going to read a little snippet from this. You know, uh, man, there's so much good stuff in this book. I, I, I just, I got so much stuff marked in this book. Uh, you know, I'm going to read this. <laughs> I'm just going to go on, you guys. This is going to be a long book review. I'm just going to go on because this is, it, the book is so good. It is so good. It, 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 you want to understand revelations, what revelations is really talking about. You want to understand what the scripture is really talking about. Get this book. Get this book. 
All you Bible thumpers, get this book. If you want spiritual knowledge, you want spiritual food, you want to understand how this Satan or devil is working in our society, get this book. It's sure going to help you. It's going to give you some spiritual knowledge. It's going to give you some spiritual food and help you understand what is really going on here. Okay? Once we are bitten by a werewolf, the wolf-like energy can in, get, can get into our system and take us over just like a virus takes over a living organism. Viruses like the way to go are, are all about copying themselves. A virus can't replicate can't replicate itself. However, it has to use some other vehicle as its means of reproducing itself. Viruses need us to be their birthing chamber to the extent as we are not aware of their ploy. Their higher dimensional spirit parasites put, on, put us on, weren't us like their three dimensional space suits. A good example of this is go watch the movie Venom. I got that in that spiritual warfare video too. Go watch that movie Venom. That's what that's all about. That movie, it make it look like it's all fun and he's a superhero. But the movie Venom is talking about this way to go spirit. And that, that Venom thing is wearing him like a suit. Go watch the movie Venom again. These psychic vampires are compelled to replicate themselves through us so that we can then pass on the transmit the bug to others. Once we have completed the completed completed the choice that weds us to an antithetical way of being, our depraved inner state becomes our occupation in the sense that we now have no no inner freedom of choice, but rather a compelled by our inner necessary necessity to spread the contagion. You know, they can't, like I said, that pettiness, watch that pettiness. Watch your people. It's more than pettiness that's going on with you. The Gnostics even use the image of being bitten by a mad dog in order to describe the process of being infected by sons of darkness. In advanced stages of rabies, like a rabid animal, victim will be taken over by an irresistible urge to bite other creatures so as to pass on the virus. People taken over by rabies virus are a living, frothing symbol of what the wolf-like psychic virus known as Weedico does in its full-blown virulent stage. Okay, so people, this you're dealing with, you know, you're dealing with, and, and again, it doesn't have a form. You're talking about a virus that's in your mind. You're talking about uh, a spirit that they, that has been designed for people, an ideology that's being adopted by people and, and a lot of us unknowingly adopted. Okay? So, again, that was chapter six. Uh, ugh, it's so much stuff in here and I don't want to keep you longer than an hour. Uh, it's so much stuff in here I've marked. Vampire Squid Economics. Uh, man, look at this. He talks about the, the way to call spirit. Um, man, this is a good book. You got to get this book. You got to get, if you want to understand spiritual warfare, you want to understand what could possibly infect your spirit and stop you from a ri rising to a higher state of consciousness, get this book. Okay? I, I, I can't emphasize that enough because he broke that down so simply the way the ancestors uh, described it to me. Go watch that spiritual warfare video. And I hadn't even read this book when I made this video. When I made that video, I hadn't read this book yet. But yet, the insights in, in this book is what the ancestors and my spirit guides have revealed to me. It's something how the ancestors be working with me, you guys. I, I'm always shocked. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to close out. But I want to emphasize, please, <laughs> this book is awesome. You know, it's awesome. It's awesome book brilliantly written and help you break down you want to know what what the devil what the satan really is about you know they got him with horns and a, and a pitchfork and all that no no that is not it we're talking about psychology and see the church hasn't caught up with this type of spiritual knowledge yet 
They still are personifying Jesus. They still personifying Satan, but they are not talking about psychology, which is the study of the soul, which is where there's real spiritual food at, people. You want to know what about Satan? You want to know spiritual knowledge? You have to learn about psychology, but they don't want to talk about that because a lot of them don't like going to see a psychologist. They don't like peeling back the onion to seeing what's going on really on the inside of them, taking the mask all the way off. They don't, a lot of them don't like that. Not all of them are like that, but it's a, a you know, a lot of them are like that. And then there are some, uh, there, there are some uh, in the church that are very, very knowledgeable. They, 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 they have, they are, they're rising in their awareness. They are, they are going to higher consciousness there. And then there's some that's absolutely complacent where they are and they don't think that they have anything more to learn. You know, I'm not picking on church people. Not all church people are like that. But it's certainly a lot of them in this church. It, it is a very need to re-examine the spiritual knowledge that they are teaching in church. And there is a real need to implement psychology, the study of psychology in this church so they can understand spirituality. But yet they keep those separate. And I don't, you know, I know why. Because there is a war on consciences. They don't want people waking up in there. You know, they don't want people working, waking up in there. That, that stop a lot of things going on up in there. Psychology, psychologically speaking, this is called the archetype of the apocalypse. Page 185. What chapter is this? Chapter 11. And he talk, talks about the archetypal uh psycho history like this book this book goes deep i love i love i like this book i like this book uh psychologically speaking the apocalypse archetype and that's an archetype that's not and that like i told you and i, I wrote that book christ consciousness i talked about how our ancestors was using astrology and the zodiac to track the consciousness of humanity and here he's talking about and that's what that bible is see it's, it's psychology apocalypse archetype it's an archetype it's not to be taken literally okay it's not to be taken literally it's the it's to examine the psychosis of society and yourself all right it's highly activated in the collective psyche and is living itself out in and through human history in an unconscious hence destructive way when the archetype like uh, apocalypse is activated in the collective unconsciousness, it tends to attract, conscript, and direct whatever is of psychic nature in this vicinity to align with its own field of force. The word apocalypse, etymologically speaking, refers to something previously hidden and invisible being uncovered, revealed, and brought to light. And that's what the, this way to go spirit is being brought to light. See, that's what that's all about. See, if they break down the they break down the scripture the way they need to, people would be fully enlightened, and wouldn't we wouldn't be caught up in this insanity that we're in now. Okay, where am I at here? The word. Okay, uh, let me get here. Whereas in religious language, the apocalypse has to do with the incarnation of God and the coming of the Messiah. Psychologically speaking, the apocalypse means momentous, world-shattering events of coming of the self. Ah! Coming of the self! Did you hear him say that? Coming of the self. And to conscious realization. Like I said, we need to update that scripture. We're not, we're not, we're not understanding fully what is happening on the world stage is the very archetypical event we call the, the Wedico eclipse, the apocalypse informed by the Wedico into which we have all been born so as to play our supporting roles, whether we are conscious of it or not. God and humanity are operating in concert, concert with each other, co-creating the apocalypse together. Okay, if the wrath of God comes, it will be the human hands that punish, push the button. Okay, again, not this God out the sky, not this devil coming from hell. It's going to be us because this spirit has taken, uh, taken control. 
of, of our powers in high places, okay? If the love of God would replace the old order with new age, it is a human work and creativity which fashion it. He talks about the new age in here too, about them being, uh, you know, talking about love and light and not want to look at the shadow, look at reality, the shadow parts of themselves, of the shadow part of the world. They too have been taken over by the way to call because they're refusing to look at reality of what's really going on in the world. New agers, read this book. You will be enlightened when you read this book. But I'm going to stop here. I don't want to keep you long. Uh, if, if, you know, people, loved ones, please study your psychology. That's how you're going to rise here. That's what they taught in Kemet. This is some of the stuff they taught in Kemet. If you can't control your mind, you can't look into your psychology, the study of your soul, you're not going to ascend uh, in higher states of consciousness if you don't do this work. And no, everybody, it ain't no little eyes and uh, big U's, okay? This is everyone has to participate and do the work. And I'm glad he said it right here in this book. Very insightful, informative book. I hope you enjoyed this book review. I hope it was informative. Uh, I hope it was insightful to you, loved ones. I do recommend the book. If you want some more spiritual knowledge, you want to understand your scripture, you want to do some shadow work, you want to understand what's going on in this world, hey, read the book. Again, Dispelling the Way to Go, Breaking the Curse of Evil by Paul Levy. All right? Thank you for being here with me today, loved ones. I got this book at Amazon, I think. Uh, here it said it was 17 bucks. Worth every penny. Worth every freaking penny. Okay? I love you guys. Take care of yourself. I'll be here soon with some more book reviews. Maybe talking about some more ancestral veneration. Uh, you guys know I love the ancestors and I'm beefing up my ancestor... Uh, rituals. So I'll be here to share some more book reviews with you. Take care. Light and love. Namaste. I shade love one. See you soon.